dear viewer, make sure you click on the subscribe button, and the notification bell. And be the first to watch new videos, of Apostle John Chi. Watch and be blessed. If I have one last breath left in my lungs, I will use it to praise your name. If I have one last breath left in my lungs, I will use it to praise your name. If I have one last breath left in my lungs, I will use it to praise your name. This is why. You've been so good, so good. You've been so good, Lord, to me. I don't know about you, girls. He's been so good, so. been so so good to me he's been so so good so good he's been so so good to me can I have a witness if I have if I have one last breath left in my lungs, left in my lungs, I will use it to praise your name. If I have, if I have one last breath left in my lungs, I will use This is why you are. You've been so good, so good. You've been so good, Lord, to me. You've been so good to me. you were down and you knew that was the end of your life think about those moments that you felt like giving up think about those challenges and those trials you went through the same challenges that others went through and they lost their lives yet the same challenges God took you through it God has been so good to you can I get a witness in here? Raise the voice. You need so good. Yeah. So, so good. I'm a witness to your goodness. I'm a witness to your goodness, God. You've been so good, love, to me. You've been so good. So good. So
left in my lungs. I will use it to praise your name. To praise your name. If I have one last breath in my lungs. Thank you. Viewers all over the world, thank you for joining us. Today is the day the Lord has made. You will rejoice and be glad in it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, you are welcome to today's live broadcast. Coming to you from the Ark of God's Covenant Ministry. I believe you are counted for the blessings. Your situation does not embarrass God. He has solution. So give a smile to brighten your face. Whatever situation you are in, the way out for you has come. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Let me encourage you this morning to remain strong in your faith, to remain strong in your belief that Jesus Christ is now working out the answer. Thank you, Lord. Viewers, think of the tallest, most gigantic and splendid tree soaring into the heavens, its peak Beyond sight, it started with this small seed. Think of the biggest building that has been structured and built. It started with this small brick. Think of the tallest, most ferocious, awesome mountain peak soaring into the heavens. The summit of it started with one small step. Think of the most successful business. It all began with one dollar, one pound, one euro, one naira, one CD, one franc. Think of the greatest, most useful and beneficial invention. The telephone, the aeroplane, the computer. It all began with the vision and determination of one man. Look at your hands, your feet, and your face. You started as a tiny embryo in your mother's womb. Look at how big you are now. Look at how big you have become. In your mind, picture the future you eagerly and earnestly desire. The future your heart dreams of. It all begins with what is in your hand today. 
Whatever you possess today is enough to create anything else you will ever want in your future. It all starts with what you have in your hands now. Picture your future. Look at your hands. They are irrevocably connected. This will lead me to my message today titled, What is in your hands? What is in your hands? Let me take you to that 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Let's take our reading from verse 6. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give us he purposes in his hearts, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. Wow. What is in your hands? When I say what is in your hands, I am not merely referring to what is seen. Because as Christians, we live by faith, not by sight. What gift do you have? What gift do you possess? They are what God will use to bless others through you. As a Christian, you have been given a bright future. What a future lies before you. But to receive this future, you must be ready to do things according to God's will and God's word. Because your future lives in God's word. Your future lives in God's word. That future you desire does not allow you to waste time. It does not tolerate selfishness, envy, and greed, desire change, desire more to be like our Savior, Jesus Christ. The cause is there. Give all of your energy, time, and effort for the sake of this just and life-changing cause. This holy cause of liberty your future is connected to requires Devotion, not emotion. It demands for sacrifice, not compromise. It calls for conviction, not confliction. Are you ready to pay the price? Are you ready to make the sacrifice? Are you ready to do what you have never done before? Now is the time. Now is the hour. Now is the moment. Step out of your comfort zone into the danger zone. Bearing the gospel of truth as a flaming torch in a generation of darkness. If you are a Christian, what is going through your mind is a picture of your future. Let your words, attitudes, and character become a photograph of the future you desire. Let every atom of your energy, every second of your time, every ounce of your strength be spent on the fulfillment of your future. Is it time you possess? Use it. For God's glory. Is it money? Use it for his glory. Is it strength? Use it for his glory. Every
every good thing God has given you was given for a purpose. Therefore, use them for God's glory. You have enough resources within and around you to make a difference in your world. If efficiently and effectively used, there is a great reward for dedicating your life for the happiness of others. Dedicate yourself for the happiness of humanity. Remember, love rejoices when others do well. Love looks around to see those who are in need, those who are poor, you can help them. Someone has been waiting for you for a lifetime. Look for them. Someone needs your love, your money, your time, your effort, your strength. Go and give it to them. Go and give it to someone who needs it. Your success and happiness depends on your willingness to help someone succeed in life. God wants to use you to improve lives, to change other people's lives. As you help them, the Lord will multiply you. God is looking for suitable men. God is not looking for experts, but for suitable men. Are you one of them? Someone has been waiting for you for a lifetime. You are saved to save others. You are blessed to bless others. Look at what happened to Peter and the crippled man at the beautiful gate in that act three. During his earthly ministry, Jesus Christ went to the temple several times. But it was Peter who was sent to the crippled man. Your money cannot speak for you. Your pounds, dollars, and euros cannot speak for you. Your naira, francs, cannot speak for you. Your properties, estate, fleet of cars cannot speak for you. But those you have will live to talk of you, talk of your goodness to this generation, and to the generation yet unborn. Help is the most valuable investment you can think of. The value of money is not in the flashy things you own, or the mansions you can boast of, or in how much power and influence you have in this world. The value of money is in changing and improving the life of your fellow human being. God is not interested in your academic qualifications. The accounts you have, the amount of material possessions you own, or your fat bank accounts at home and abroad, is interested in how many people that have received the knowledge of God's saving grace through your inputs. The kingdom of God is all about how many lives you can improve and not how much money you can amass. My reward in life is determined by the problems I solve for others. My reward is determined by the problems I solve for others. People want to succeed in life. People want their life to improve. They are many physically challenged, many less privileged, many widows and orphans around you. They are in need of something you possess. God loves the widows and the strangers 
Therefore, man, if he loves God truly, is under obligation to love the widows, the orphans, and the strangers. Meet them and be their benefactor. Someone has been waiting for you for a lifetime. You cannot afford to fail them. Failing them is failing God. Because God says in Matthew 25 verse 45, whatever you do or fail to do to the least of my people, that you do unto me. As you give to others, God will continue the supply. He will give you a purse that never grows old. Treasures in heaven that faileth not. You will always find yourself among those eager to add and multiply to your life. Remember, you cannot succeed alone. You need your neighbor and your neighbor needs you to succeed. You need good, informed, and inspired people to succeed. This means success is a collection of relationships. No one can go it all alone. The way and manner we are connected to each other is beyond what a sentence can explain. It is too fundamental. If you were to consider how far you have come, you would not want to share the dividends of your success. Remember, you have come a long way. You have come all the way long, full of danger, persecution, hatred, envy, and jealousy. All these are to strengthen your desire and determination for the challenges ahead. Every person we meet today is trying to change their lives in some way. They want their income improved. They want better living conditions. They want excellence. But they don't know how. You are a solution to someone with a problem. God did not send you to this world empty. He has deposited something in you to contribute to the well-being of your fellow brothers. You need to discover what you possess. To share with others. This is a message. The Lord is declaring just for you. Your happiest days. Your happiest seasons. Your happiest periods. Your happiest moments are just beginning now. Someone has been waiting for you for a lifetime. Someone somewhere needs something you possess. As a believer, all of heaven is waiting for you to go forth, to heal, to bless, and to save. God has no hands, but our hands to do his work. God has no mouth, but our mouth to tell people of how he died for us. God has no feet, but our feet to carry the gospel of grace to others. It is a personal decision. No one can make it happen for you. No one can do it for you. Life can be so uncertain. So do not wait for a more convenient time, a more convenient day to make that decision. Because that day may never come. Galatians 6 verse 2 says, Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. You have been given a heavenly assignment to reach out to others who need what you possess and show them the love of Christ. This assignment cannot take a day off. It is a continuous exercise. And the foundation of your lifestyle as a child of God, where the world cares less, we Christians should care more. I mean, we should spend more on others and less on ourselves. 
This is the only way we can commit more faith and love to the society of which we are a part. You are a part. I am a part. Whether you like it or not, the assignment has been given. Whether the instruction is pleasant or unpleasant, that does not change the fact that it requires your 100% obedience. Ask Jonah, and he will tell you that even if you try to run away from your assignment, your assignment will not run away from you. This is because a God-given command on the inside of each person is to become more and multiply. You were actually created for the glory of God. So your assignment is to glorify God in any and every situation you find yourself in. The moment you start reaching out to others with the hands of love and care, showing them by your lifestyle and character that Christ lives in you, that same moment you start winning. These are your happiest moments. I hope this message has made you committed to God. Because we commit to God only those who have committed themselves to God. People of God, make yourself so valuable to the kingdom of God that God cannot afford to lose you. Be a solution to someone in trouble. We begin to succeed with our lives when others' troubles begin to matter to us. Your success and happiness depends on your willingness to help others succeed. Successful people are simply problem solvers. What is in your hand is enough to create the future you desire. Look for those who need what you possess. What is in your hand is enough to bless someone else. May God bless his words in your hearts. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen.